Hey guys, so today I'm here to show you my latest project, which is a Hitachi HD 44780 display. That's the classic um, character display controller interface with LabVIEW, which is running on my Windows uh, 7 virtual machine. And that's all running through a National Instruments uh, USB 6009 DAC card. So first I'll uh, just kind of show you quickly how the hardware is connected, and then the really interesting part is the, all the software that I wrote uh, that controls all the different aspects of the display and prints things on the screen. Alright, so it's a pretty simple setup. Um, this is a four-line display, um, and the way that those actually work is there's two Hitachi controllers on the back, one here, one here, and they just have separate enable lines. Um, so basically it's actually two displays being interfaced with simultaneously. You just um, change which one is enabled to change the configuration parameters or write text to either the top two or the bottom two lines. Um, this blue line here is an analog output, which I'm using to control the contrast. I've got four data lines here. I'm driving the display in nibble mode. And then I've got two enables, the register select and the read write lines. Uh, and the thing is actually powered by this, which is just a simple five volts coming straight off my USB. So yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. There's not much to it. Um, it's actually kind of nice. No breadboard, just uh, you know, wire straight from the display into the DAC card. So I'm going to flip over to the computer here and I'll show you the class that I wrote uh, to model this device. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a quick tour of my LabVIEW program. Pretty much this is the top level main front panel which has a simple four lines where you can enter text and then a force update. Um, these are all event driven so if you change this, this, this or this it'll update or if you click the force update um, it'll do that. So I'll just run it here, click force update and the display next to me is updating. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so I'll just give you a quick tour of how to use this and then um, a couple of quick details on the underlying implementation. So basically you create a new instance of the class, use a property node to assign uh, the different pins that the display is connected to. Uh, you can see that this is a four-line display. I've got two instances of the class um, and then I'm sharing all of the lines except for the enable pin. So you'll see the enable pin here is line four and the enable pin here is line seven. Uh, they all have the same parameters, you know, 5 by 7 font, two lines, the cursor is off. I only need to set the contrast on one because they both have the same contrast. Um, basically then I have this initialization routine which you have to call after creating this class. Um, uh, only nibble mode is currently working, the byte mode will come next. Um, once it's initialized, I've got an event loop here which just sits and waits for things to happen. So if, you know, line 4 changes, it'll print the display, you know, clear it, update both lines. It's pretty simple. If you click OK, it updates both. So, not much to it. Uh, I'll give you a quick tour of the initialization routine. Um, if you, again, if you go into byte mode, this is that not implemented exception that I was talking about earlier. If you're in nibble mode, though, then you get your usual, you know, it sends a command, wait, sends a command, wait, does a few things that are required to get this thing operational. And then, pretty much after that, you can send strings and clear the screen and do all different kinds of interesting things. Um, so the print string VI is very, very simple. It takes in a string. The character set of the display actually overlaps with ASCII, so I can just take it to a byte array and then send out one byte at a time as data. So not much to it. Um, I'm going to give you a little uh, look at the hardware now with the, dis with the software running so you can see you know, performance and how things work. Okay, so you can see the display here down in the middle of my desk. Uh, maybe I'll just zoom that in for you real quick. You can see they're nice and crisp. So what I'll do is I'm going to send the force update command. Um, the program is running in LabVIEW right now, so click the button. And you can see there, it's not bad. It's not super quick, but uh, you know it's good enough for any kind of control application. The nice thing is you can shut the display off while you're updating it, so you won't have to see the characters you know, kind of spitting out on the screen. So let me just zoom that out again. I know my monitor is a little bit washed out in this video here, but I'm going to change the text. Um, I'm going to change my name to uh, Hello World. Nice little smiley at the end. And um, I'll zoom back in on the display. And then I'll force the update. So I'll tab over it. And you'll see only the bottom half of the display updates. And you can see the nice little Hello World string. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty neat project. Um, if I had to do some kind of industrial control or something and I wanted to interface the display and you know, all I was using was DAC cards or something like that for the whole project, it could be useful. It only takes about six lines off your card and it's pretty quick. You can shut the display off and you know, blank it while you're updating so you don't have to see the characters spewing out on the display. 
And um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of interesting. I'm having a lot of fun with LiveView, I always do. I don't tend to use it for too many projects, but when I do, I, I really have a good time with it. So, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.